You're watching KCMI TV. Well, I'm glad you joined me today, and um, I think I have a great uh, word to share with you. And we're going to take our initial reading out of the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 20. And uh, I want to talk to you about living a crucified life. And in the book of uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 17, and it. Jesus is he's going up to Jerusalem. It says he took the 12 disciples apart in the way and he said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and to the scribes and they shall condemn him to death. In verse 19, it says, And they shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. I, I read that portion of scripture uh, for our lesson today because Jesus is not just telling his disciples, I'm going to die. He's telling them how I'm going to die. And he tells them, he says this, he says, they're going to use the cross to crucify me. And uh, the other day I was just reflecting on this in prayer. And of course, and I want to really want to hammer this home. The only way you and I can live a victorious life is if we live a crucified life. And that crucified life is not dealing with our spirit man, it's dealing with our natural man. And uh, it's very interesting, I, I googled this or went to, in my study to Strong's, and I thought I want to see what the Old Testament says about the cross. The cross is not mentioned in the Old Testament. And the reason being is because the new creation did not start until the New Testament. And Jesus came as our example, and Jesus was not crucified because he was a sinner. He was our propitiation or our substitute. And so he allowed us, he allowed himself to become the substitute for us. He said, well, why, you know, why doesn't the Lord cause all of us to be crucified? Because Jesus, oh, I like this. He's the only one who didn't have sin in him. And because he did not have sin in him, the devil could not keep him in the grave. Death had no power over him. He was able to resurrect. And he said this, he said, they're going to crucify me, but on the third day, I am going to be resurrected. If you and I were crucified, we wouldn't be able to resurrect because we live in a fleshly body that still has sin in it. And we're being redeemed and, and, and changed by the power of the Lord. But um, crucifying the flesh, and, and sometimes we don't understand this, but salvation is instant. Confessing with thy mouth, believing in thy heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and thou shalt be saved. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so becoming a new creation is instant. It's You cannot crucify the old man until you become a new creation because the old man is not going to kill himself. And so it takes a new creation in Christ to be able to crucify the old man. And it's a process. Um, you know, I, I've had the Holy Ghost for 60 years and I'm still every day crucify my old man. And this is why Paul said this. He said, I die daily. That, you know, just as Jesus had the power because of the sinless life to come out of the grave in resurrection, so does the old man have the power to resurrect himself if we do not keep him in, in the ground. And so uh, I want to talk to you about the cross and of all of the ways that Jesus could have died, 
the Father chose the cross to be the implement or the tool that that would kill him. And um, in Matthew, um, let's see, I think we'll go to Matthew chapter chapter 10. We just go back a few chapters. Um, there's so much in the scripture on this, but in Matthew chapter 10 and verse um, 38, and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. First of all, the having a crucified life is not a choice. The Lord said, if you don't carry your cross, you're not worthy of me. It's very interesting here that the Lord is not telling us that we have to die in the natural. He said, he said, no, he said, you have to take up your cross. And verse 39, he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. What is he saying here? He's saying, if you hold on to the old man and you don't crucify him, he said, you will lose the life of the spirit man. But he said, if you will crucify the old man, he said, then you will find your new life in Christ. In um, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is speaking here, and he says in verse 24, he said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is a really strong verse. The Lord says the only way that you can follow Christ is first of all, you have to deny your flesh. That means coming to a place that you can say no. The Bible talks about, it says teaching us that denying ungodliness and fleshly lusts that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present life. Um, serving God and I, don't take this the wrong way, but it's not easy. Number one, you have to be intentional about serving the Lord because it involves carrying a cross. And the Lord said this. He said, if any man is going to follow me, he says, first of all, he has to deny himself and then take up his cross. Uh, serving the Lord is for him. For in the eyes of God, the way we carry our cross is, if we, is that we deny the old man. And um, when you carry the cross, first of all, it's it that cross in the old in the New Testament. It was a large, it was a large cross, and it had a cross piece in it. And that cross wouldn't let a man go everywhere. And when people don't carry the cross in their life, and see that, then then it'll let you can go anywhere you want. It'll go through any doorway. But when you carry the cross and you have it on you in the spirit, there are places that your flesh wants to go, but you got to go through an opening to get there, and you get up to it and you can't go through. Why? Because the cross, Hallelujah, is keeping you from going through. Uh, I would say this is probably the greatest mistake that modern church has made today, is that we took the cross out of Christianity. And we have created this Christianity, this salvation for human beings that doesn't involve the death of the old man, it's the rehabilitation of the old man. And I want you to hear me, you cannot rehabilitate your old nature, you have to kill it. And on every single day, th this is why uh, the greatest single weapon that you and I have to kill the old man, the power of the cross is prayer. And you say, well, how do we know that, Pastor? Because when you go back 
and Jesus is now getting ready to, he knows he's going to be arrested. He's hours away. He knows prophetically. Isaiah talked about it, and the Psalms talked about it, and he knows it's going to be a hideous death, and that, that natural man in him is, is just being repelled by what's coming. What did Jesus do in order to be able to submit and take up the cross? The Bible says he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and what did he do? He went into intercession. He went into the power of prayer. People that don't pray don't live a crucified life. And I have Christians all the time say, well, I love the Lord, but you know, I just, it's hard for me to pray. Well, then you're never going to live a victorious life. Because why is it hard? It's because as soon as you get into prayer, you're picking up the cross. And that old man is saying, oh, I don't want this. This is, this is against me. This thing will take me out. It'll kill me. And God's saying, no. He says, you cannot. In fact, let me read this verse here. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. I love this, where he says this. He says, um, I'm sorry, in Galatians. Let's just go to Galatians. I think this is a great verse. Galatians chapter 5 in verse 24, it says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and its desires. And if we live in the Spirit, we will also walk in the Spirit. You cannot be Christ unless you live a crucified life. Remember in the, in the New Testament, there was the rich young ruler that came to the Lord and he, he was listening to the teachings of Jesus and obviously he was drawn to him and he loved what the Lord was saying and he said, Master, he said, tell me what I need to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus looked at me and said, well, you know, he said, you got to obey the, the commandments of the Father and not steal, not kill, not commit adultery. And that rich young ruler, you know, he's standing there and he goes, well, man, he said, I've been doing all that since my youth. And the Lord looked at me and he realized, but you're not denying your flesh. He said, son, he said, if you want to follow me, he said, you're going to have to take all that you have, sell it, and give it to the poor. See, for each of us, our cross looks different. What will kill my flesh might not kill yours, because that's not the weakness of your flesh. And what, what I have a, a, a propensity to do may, may not be yours. And so learning how to crucify the flesh and learning how to yield to the Lord. Paul, you know, Paul was an amazing man. I, I don't think in the New Testament outside of Christ there was probably a greater man. And he said this, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite verses. He said, I am crucified with Christ. You say, well, why do we have to be crucified? Because if the old man stays alive, you now live in civil war. Instead of being able to devote all your spiritual energy to the purpose that God has made you, you're living in a civil war on the inside between your own nature and your new nature. Remember I told you, you, you can never... <clears throat> Crucify the old man until you become a new man. It's the new man that has the power to be able to crucify the old man. And when I, some of the most miserable Christians that I know as far as for themselves is those who won't live the crucified life and so they stay in chaos. They stay in a state of turmoil. You get around them, they're not happy. And there's this constant war. I found a place, and I think that so many of you have found this place. Hallelujah. I found a place 
where I live in peace. I'd rather say no to my flesh. I would rather every day, see, and this is why the Lord talks about, he says, daily, take up your cross. If you're going to follow me, he said, you have to, this is, this is not something you do on Sunday. This is why so many Christians are struggling because they want to kill the flesh on Sunday and let the old man live all the rest of the week. No, I thank God for church, but church is not how you crucify your old man. This is a personal thing between you and God. This is something that you do on a daily. It's a private thing. It's something that's out of the, out of the, the sight of men. And when you find that place in God to where every day the old man stays dead, and here's something else I want to tell you. Every day you kill the old man, the next day he's a little weaker. And the next day is a little weaker. And then you go a year and you find that, you know, I'm not struggling like I used to in this area. Why? Because you have so crucified that thing. It's so weak. It can't raise its head. And so now you're not tormented with desires and you're not tormented with lust and unforgiveness and hatred or covetousness. You, 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 you're carrying that cross and that cross keeps those desires dead. And so now you get up and you can say, oh Lord, this is the day that you have made. I rejoice and I am so glad in it. And that you're not living in war anymore. Your heart's not a bloody battlefield. It's so much easier to live a crucified life than it is to try to keep the old man alive and, and to keep him, uh, you know, happy. Um, as I end here, and Paul said this, he said, I am crucified with Christ. And what he was saying was, because we know this, the Bible says, if we are in the likeness of his death. If we're planted in the likeness of his death, we are also raised in the likeness of his resurrection. And when Christ was crucified, he reached ahead and he crucified our old man. So we live that crucified life. But I can also tell you this, it is a choice. You this is why, you know, you, you can't go days without reading the Bible and days without prayer, and you can't miss three weeks without going to church because the very fact of not feeding yourself spiritually is what gives life to the old man. And then one day you find out, oh, how did I do this? How did I mess up? Because your old man got stronger than your spirit man. So I want to encourage you today, if you haven't done it yet, Go get that cross, put it on your back. Listen, I go to bed with that cross on me. I get up in the morning with that cross on me. I don't go anywhere without the cross. At the cross, at the cross, hallelujah, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. I thank God for the cross. I'm thankful that in the natural realm, I don't have to physically die. I get to live the life of Christ. Well, I hope this has helped you. I love you. I'll see you next week. God bless you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org.